Hello there, uh, very good morning and welcome to your 10 a.m. update from the People's Progressive Party Civic. I'm your host, Eddie Lane. This morning, I'm joined by Sesnarain Singh and Sanjeev Datadin. Sanjeev is an attorney at law and a candidate of the People's Progressive Party. Ses, Sanjeev, good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. Morning, Ses. Morning, Ed. Morning to your viewers and listeners, and thanks for having me. So it's another day, um, and we are still awaiting an end to an election that occurred on the 2nd of March, 2020. We are in our fifth month. Um, the results are known. Uh, the, the numbers are out in the public domain. I think Guyanese, every single Guyanese, uh, the world over, know the results of the March 2nd general and regional elections. And if I can say, the People's Progressive Party Civic received 233,336 votes. The APNU AFC, uh, 217,920 votes, a difference of 15,416 votes. It is clear. Uh, Sanjeev, on a, a, another program, I think you used, or, or uh, last night rather, I, I, Joe used the analogy of cricket, where the PPP made 217, uh, 236 runs, APNU made 217 runs, but somehow uh, the umpire, or APNU wants the umpire to declare them the winner of the game. And that is what we are in, and that is what brought us to this point. Um, because of the fact that the world is aware of the results of the elections, which was more or less um, uh, for the concretized, so to speak, with the recount, which revealed, and, and the recount exercise was very thorough. Um, it, it was very transparent, and it, it weeded out any concerns that existed previously with regards to um, how the votes were cast. Um, I said we did out any concerns inclusive of, of the numbers that were presented by Mingo, which we all know were fraudulent. So we have the, the accurate numbers, we have the transparent numbers, we have the valid votes cast. Um, the issue that we are faced with now is the fact that Granger and his cabal are continuing to hold on to power um, by all means. The new narrative, and, and I, I want to start from the, 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 the basis of the narrative, because we have recognized um, the changing narrative of this cabal. Every day they wake up and they come with something new. As much as uh, all of them are lies, they would find another lie every day to tell their supporters to try to force down the throats of the Guyanese people. Uh, the most recent has been, um, and I heard Basil Williams, no less a person last evening, um, talking about the CCJ vitiating the, 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 um, the recount order. I, I, it's amazing how Basil Williams can stand up like that and the cabal can stand up like that and lie blatantly uh, to the people of this country and to the world over. I want us to start from that basis, Sanjeev. Uh, this claim about the recount order being vitiated. Um, let us start from there. Um, Ed, the short answer and the short response is the recount order which is order 60 of 2020 made by gcom was not struck down that is the short and simple answer the court in paragraph 39 of its judgment went through the process they said why it occurred they said what happened is that a carefully crafted response in accordance with the challenges that had arisen had to take place, that the recount was to take place, that matrices were to be produced by the various super, by the supervisors, which were GCOM supervisors, at the various counting stations, and that those matrices were to be presented to Mr. Loenfield. Mr. Loenfield, as the CEO, was then supposed to tabulate those matrices and present it to the chairman, the chairwoman. That is all set out in great detail in paragraph 39. There is no if, ands, and buts about it. The court was very detailed. Now, what they have taken from the judgment is where the court said it is elementary that Order 60 could not be 
any way to change the constitution. They misinterpret what the court was referring to there. The court was really uh, dealing, quote unquote, with the Court of Appeal. And what they were saying is, you, the Court of Appeal, chose to interpret the Constitution of Guyana with reference and by use of Order 60. And they were saying that it's elementary, that you cannot do that. You can't take lesser legislation or, or, or uh, legislative instruments of lesser importance to alter legislative instruments of higher importance. It would be the Constitution, it would be laws, it would be regulations, and then come executive orders. So the orders are the least of, of the important on, on the scale in terms of uh, how important they are and their, their strength and their power. So this is very, very clear because the court went through. You see what the Court of Appeal was trying to do was interpret Order 60 and using what they found Order 60 to mean to apply it in their interpretation to 177 and thereby came up with this grandiose, uh, silly interpretation of inserting a word into the constitution. And all the court of the CCJ was saying is, it is elementary that you can't do that. So we don't need to explain to you why. We don't need to go through the whole nine yards of why the Court of Appeal erred in law by doing that. They're saying it is elementary. It's an elementary rule of statutory interpretation that a statute or a legislative instrument of low importance amends an, an instrument of higher importance. That can't be. It can amend instruments of equal or lower importance not higher. And this is the least in the scale. The second thing that Basil Williams tries to conjure is that if perchance this recount is invalid, we somehow or the other end up at Mingo's bingo door. And he portrays that in what he is saying. Now, yesterday should have been very clear to him that when uh, Justice Singh decided that Mingo's numbers, which were in abeyance, are now struck. They are now gone. So if the recount order is to, as if you take uh, the Basil's argument and you say the recount order was not there, then there is nothing. Because all of the first set of re, uh, Mingo's numbers were struck down by the court. So they can't be used. The second one, the commission struck it down yesterday. So that's gone too. So you see, they're trying to find something to fill a void. But as I said to you before, Ed, they're unconcerned about numbers. Their, their mantra is, Lowenfield has declared us the winner, so swear in Granger. They're not concerned that Lowenfield, in one case, they had two thirds of the parliament. He took away 15% uh, of their votes. We don't hear a complaint about that. He took away 115,000 votes of my countrymen in his second declaration. They never said a word about that. He has added 14,000 votes. God knows where from. They're not people who voted. You don't hear Apnu say a single thing about the fact that it is preposterous that the public agency in Guyana, the sole public agency charged with monitoring democracy and delivering democracy to the people would keep changing the numbers so often. Don't they have any consistency? Don't they realize how incredulous it is and how foolish they look that every day you come up with a different set of numbers? What are the real numbers of the issue? Well, the real numbers are the recount. It was done in front of the world. It was done with everybody there uh, being present. You back? Yes, yes, I, I got my <laughs> Right. It was done with everybody being present. It was streamed live. SIS was there every day uh, tabulating and seeing that things were being done. It was streamed live on television, on Facebook, on radio. So those are the numbers that are acceptable. And but, now but Sanjeev, Sanjeev if, I, if I should interject here, this particular aspect of the ruling that I'm showing here now, they somehow seem to be ignoring, uh, particularly the last sentence in this 
um, where it says, unless and until an election court decides otherwise, the votes already counted by the recount process as valid votes are incapable of being declared invalid by any person or authority. So this is in conflict with what Vassar Williams is seeking to peddle because it's clearly the CCJ conflict. is saying. It's in conflict with everything they are trying to say about the recount. Because what the court was at pains to point out to them is the recount votes, the valid, what has been determined valid at the recount stands until an order of court. They even went further. They said all the 26 letters or 25 letters written by Joe Harmon to complain about what it is, all of the contents of those letters should form the subject of an election petition. So there is nothing left outside. All the complaints, dead, migrant, everything is put squarely where it should be. You know, I think we've lost that again. <laughs> so I'm not hearing you, your mic. Yeah, I, I, I heard you, but um, so, I mean, I would want to jump in by saying I think you're absolutely correct because historically in Guyana, only one political party is known to have arithmetical defects and electoral theft. You remember, I mean, we have clear evidence of a party doing this actively. Um, and now they're now adding it with economic destruction of this country because what a lot of people are now realizing while we are arguing all of these legal points, this economy is grinding to a halt silently. And the people who are really suffering that pain is the masses, the majority of people. And it's sad that, that you know, um, coming from a legacy of stealing ballot boxes from 1973 and, and all those times, now we have in 2020, a history of altered spreadsheet with fake numbers. But on top of that, Bas Basil Williams and these guys are feigning ignorance of the law and trying to distort the law to the point that when the law is broken, they then jump on their bandwagon with a, a, a empty rhetoric. Um, you know, remember that empty rhetoric that one man was saying, I am following the constitution. Well, when we look at the actions of these people from the vote of no confidence in December 20. 18 to now, nobody's been following the constitution in their, in their group. It takes a real sanctimonious gangster, or might I say gangsters, to conduct their affair in such a manner. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's despicable. And I'm glad you mentioned that I was there because I remember when their man Mingo mangled the numbers in district number four, um, what we saw, and not me alone, was fraud, outright fraud. I mean, in that room was the Commissioner Gonraj Ben, uh, the U.S. Ambassador, the U.K. Ambassador, former Prime Minister Bruce Golding, Kit Nascimento, so many people from the new parties, um, and our, our good friend Carol Joseph from the PNC. So we all saw their man mangling the numbers and committed outright public fraud. And today, these same people have the audacity to try to lecture this nation that they're following the Constitution they're following the, the rule of law as prescribed by the CCJ judgment. Um, my elders always taught me one thing. Show me who your friends are and I shall tell you who you are. And what I'm seeing here is a group of people in the leadership of the PNC who are acting like electoral bandits. And that is what I am seeing. Um, you know, so... Look, yesterday, for example, I don't know if you noticed this one, in a newspaper statement on July 13th, um, the CEO of GCOM said in, in his justification for using the mangled Mingo numbers from district number four, he claimed, and I quote, I am acting within the confines of the law and my election report reflects the edicts of Guyana's constitution, unquote. unquote. So he said his report, but I was wondering which one of the seven or eight reports, I can't keep count now, which one of these reports he was really talking about. And, I, and this brings me to the point, how can you have one election in one single moment in one year and have all these different sets of numbers? Um, the only consistency I, come, I see coming 
from Lewinfield and Mingo and their political sponsors is a continued level of inconsistency uh, and their failure to embrace the truth. And this is the truth. The truth is the PBPC won these 2020 general elections with 233,336 valid votes. Ed? Um, thanks, Ace. And, and I'm glad both of you, you brought the point out that, and, and this, is, this is part and parcel of this whole uh, agenda of changing narratives. You have them coming out every day, uh, waking up every morning to say, look, I think the life from yesterday is getting a bit old. Uh, let me get something else today. Without thinking these things uh, through. And what is even worse and what is sad, I think, is the fact that you have a small group of supporters who are following and believing what these guys are saying blindly. The fact of the matter is, there is only one thing to consider in all of this. When the PVP released its statement to fall, received from GCOM um, on the 3rd or 4th of March, the numbers were out there. The numbers on, the, on, on those statements of poll were not questioned by GCOM nor APNU AFC. Both parties failed to, re to release their copies. The recount basically vindicated the PVP's position that we won the elections. There are a few numbers changed here and there because a vote that was first um, deemed invalid uh, based on a second look maybe deemed valid. Um, but nothing material to change what we would have said when, when, when we um, had those statements of poll uploaded on that website. So the PPP has been consistent with its position. And, and they say, when, and you know, there is a saying, when you tell one lie, you have to tell a hundred or a thousand others to cover that one lie. And every single day, we are seeing this coming out from the AP and UAFC. They have told thousands of lies since March 2nd. Why? Because they started with a lie by claiming that they won the elections and claiming the numbers that Mingo would have uh, put together were the accurate numbers. So you have to keep lying to cover that up. So that is why the narrative has been changing and without any thought, you know? You have people coming out to say, um, and you look at them. If I was a supporter of APNO, I would have been asking questions a long time now. You can't on one day say that you lost, the, that, that the elections were, were, were rigged, that there were irregularities. And on the next day, when a report is prepared to suit you, you say, oh, the elections were, were, were accurate and we won the election. Let's take their argument that there were irregularities in the elections when, when the recount was done. And they're saying that over 115,000 votes were, were, um, should be removed based on what Lowenfield said. Then how now Lowenfield submitted a report without excluding those numbers and you're accepting it? Any logical thinking person will ask the question, if you said only last week or two weeks ago, 115,000 votes should not be included, why are you accepting a result now that included the 115,000 votes when you're talking about decency and honesty? And I want to say before I bring you in back here, Sanji, that I feel my personal view, and I hold very strongly to this conviction, that Granger is one of the most dishonest and indecent persons to have ever hold public office in this country. Ed, one of the things that we've seen is you're right. The lie is that they did not win the election when they're claiming to have won the election. And that's why they wouldn't produce their SOPs. That's why they were went with the recount. Uh, once the recount was finished and CARICOM was on the unshakable view that the PVP had won and it represented the recount figures represented the will of the people. That is why they attacked everybody all the prime ministers, the ex-prime ministers, the international organizations, any individual that spoke up, they were rabid in their attacks on those people. But the, the, what we have to recognize, Ed, is they have one object, to stay in power. 
when the no confidence motion occurred more than a year ago in 2018, December 21, when that happened, they used the court process to say, we're going to go to court to discover if 33 is a majority of 65. Utter trash, but they went to do that. And while that was being done, they remained in power. Then they used another excuse by GCOM, which is clearly compromised, to say that they can't deliver an election within a time. And then they had the election delayed until March. Now, all of that was part of a process of just delaying it. What has happened is, like most things, time begins to run out because you've used up all of the excuses and all of the obstacles that you could place in the way. Now, it's been 134 days since our election. And all that is happening, step by step, day by day, is more obstacles come into place. You hear that there is talk that the president, Granger, somehow has the authority to remove the chairman, the chairwoman of GCOM, Justice Claudette Singh. That is utter nonsense. To be removed, she has to, she would have had to have done something wrong, or she would have to be medically incapable of continuing her job. What has she done? She has stood up against a rigging cabal who have done everything they can to rig this election, including to collude and persuade persons who hold high office within the secretariat, who work for her to give her fictitious numbers and poor advice and try to give her, get her involved in the fraud. So what she has in fact done is she has stood up to them and said, I'm not accepting that. But this is people who are her most senior and trusted people people who are public officials paid by public, the public coffers who have now become partisan. They have demonstrated clearly that their political leaning are to government and they are concocting, fudging the numbers, inventing the numbers, fantasy numbers, whatever phrase you want to use. They are bent on doing that. Now you have to realize, and it's important that we realize, that any attempt to remove the chairwoman, Justice Claude Singh, has to be based on evidence of reality. Not your foolish say so that, oh, you think that that is so. And in these circumstances, the constitutional safeguard that exists for the removal involves a long process of establishing a, a committee, establishing a commission, there must be all of the hearings, all of that must go on. But before that even arises, Ed, they must first be that she's not doing what it is that she should do. So this doesn't even arise. This is another instance where the APNU group, cabal, whatever you call them, are trying to overreach to find more things, to find, to invent more mayhem and to inject it into the process because the process is almost complete. This last, I mean, it, there is no secret. The PPP's position and my personal position was that Lowenfield should have been fired after his conduct and his report on Saturday. He should have been dismissed forthwith. The commission clearly has that power. But Justice Claudette Singh, in her wisdom, she came to the position that what I will do, he, went, he thinks that he can rely on Mingo's numbers because he doesn't understand whatever the process. Let us make everything clear. Clear the decks. The only valid numbers we now have are the recount. When I wrote you the letter and what Justice Saunders said to do is we have to ensure that we get from you that June 16 letter fulfilled. So I am now asking you, forget the other letters, forget everything, clear your mind of everything, fulfill the instructions I gave you on the 16th of June, as the court said. But now, and if you don't do it, 
we are going to have the deputy to fulfill that. And the natural progression would be if the deputy is equally recalcitrant, they will ap appoint someone else because she has gotten to the point where she's not mincing the words anymore. She gave, you said you didn't understand. It was all of that. She said to you, listen, this is what you need to do. Now, we didn't agree that he should have been given another chance, but it's her wisdom. It's her judgment on how to execute. But she is still, she has now, as, as our colleague has said before, she has all the cards and he has none. And he either complies at this stage or he would face dismissal. Uh, Sanjeev, and uh, you spoke about the, the whole issue of them uh, creating this false narrative about being able to dismiss the, 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 the chair. Mm -hmm. And this is part and parcel of the DNA of the PNC, chair mongering. You attack people, you try to drive fear in them, all because you want them to do what you want. Justice Claudette Singh has been acting in accordance with the law. And she has been acting in accordance with what the court, our highest court, our apex court, the CCJ directed. There is no mixing and mincing of words where this, where this comes in. It is simple. The recount in, in, in an election, the constitution, the, the, the electoral laws provide for there to be a final count, which we call in common terms a recount. That can be either a single box in a single polling station, a single district, or it can be national. Those are decisions GCOM can make. We have had not, a national recount. Not to interrupt you, Ed, but this is how the desperation works in what they're trying to do. There are, they are saying that Lowenfield added these extra votes, his last thing, this is what you must do and swear, in, swear him in. This is what you're hearing from Valda Lawrence, from Basil Williams, and even the president on his page has posted a swear in Granger uh, uh, poster. So he himself has done that and his wife too. But then guess what happened, Ed? Yesterday's meeting, Vincent Alexander, who is their representative, says in the meeting, we have to do a duo. They, we can't declare any result here. He then goes, speaks to the press. He says the same thing. This, we can't do anything at this stage. We must do a duo. So your representative on the electoral commission, your, your three commissioners are saying that we have to declare a nullity. We have to do a do over of election. And your cabinet or your former cabinet ministers and the leader of your list are saying, swear in now, swear in now. All of that, Ed, is because if you look at the PPP's posture, we're not quarreling about hurry to do this and hurry to do that and we must do it. All we are saying, do your job. You have to make a declaration. That declaration must be based on legal principles within the law. Do your job. Declare, swear in the president. We're not saying 5,000 things. We're not threatening anybody. We're not demanding anything. We're saying to the public officials who are paid handsomely from the public treasury, do your job. That's all. I, yeah. I bring you in here, Cease. No, I just wanted to add something to what Sanjeev is saying because I think he's spot on. Um, what we're seeing here in Guyana today is a slash and burn strategy to stay in power. And this strategy is being lacked. I mean, somebody talk about reputation, but this strategy is being managed by people who lack character. You know, when you hold high office, one of the principal tools you need is character. And, and it exhibits an attitude of mind that lacks, and I'm going to be very firm here on this word, patriotism, lacks patriotism and love for one's country. So... When, you know, this is what we're witnessing on the part of these PNC leaders, nobody who loves their country will put their country through this. You know, look at an example that we see happening in next door in Suriname. You remember, um, Bautasir was a strong man, former president of Suriname, was, but he was on hand to hand over the power to the new president when he was formally sworn in. Bautasir went up to the new president, shook his hands and promised to work with the new government together for the Surinamese people. So 
this is what you call character. I mean, it's a better character. And this is a man who's been convicted of a crime in court, but yet he shows class and character and decency and dignity of a higher grade than these sanctimonious gangsters that we have in Guyana. Uh, you know, he does not go around the place shouting at every street corner that I am decent with flyers and, and I'm honest and I have integrity. You know, that is something for the people to determine, not for you to self-praise yourself. In Guyana, we have this campaign where um, the PNC, as, as we all recognize, have not done much for the people of, of Guyana. And it gotten even worse after the vote of uh, no confidence in December 2018. Um, since then, whatever they had in their mind came out of their mind. And we are seeing an art of indecency, an art of dishonesty, an art of polluting the rule of law and adherence to the, the rule of law. And because of that, they're now doing their last act of, of almost like raping this country, of foisting themselves on the Guyanese people. You know, their every action represents bullyism, disrespect for the rule of law. And as we're seeing now, in the case of the Mingo Mangle, outright fraud, outright fraud. Um, so the question to ask is, who were Mingo or who are Mingo and uh, Lewin Field and Myers answerable to? Because they work for the people of Guyana, as Sanjeev just said, they're paid from the taxpayer coffer. They're answerable to the GCOM commission, but they seem to be working for someone else. And the question is, who are they working for? The, the, the thing is, um, I think that answer is laid, laid bare before us um, because we have seen the actions of, of all these guys. And I asked this question last night, Sanji, and I'm gonna ask it again, and or, or I'm gonna put this out there. I personally don't believe the, the, the few acres of land at Millie's hideout is what is motivating um, low and field. Something else has to be motivating him. You know, why would I as an individual want to, to go at any length to rig an election in the favor of a political party knowing fully well that I could be jailed for life? Knowing fully well that I have not seen when this matter was called, I have not seen a single person from APNU standing outside the court to say we are here in solidarity with Lowen Field, apart from the keyboard uh, keyboard warriors who are online saying, uh, we are behind you, we are behind you. The fact of the matter is when Lowen Field stands in the docks, it's going to be Lowen Field alone. When the magistrate or the judge decides that he or she is going to hand down a sentence it's going to be a sentence for low in field alone, not those backers and those who are egging him on. So he has an opportunity again today to fix this, to come clean and to do the right thing. But guess what? We have to get that question answered as to what exactly is motivating him. Then we will get a true sense. And you know, Sanjeev, I want us to wrap up here, but I want to drop this one other issue in and let us have a discussion. In my view, you know why these guys are holding on? You know why they're trying to buy time? It's because they want to either cover their tracks with the corruption that is going on, or they're continuing to pilfer the treasury, or maybe both. And then we can point to the, the, the letter, the internal memo to the Ministry of Finance staff um, by the finance secretary, where he's practically saying, hey, Y'all keep them secrets inside. Whatever you know, we thief, don't put it outside. Keep it here. Don't say anything. That is, in essence, what he's saying. I'm going to give both of you a chance uh, to wrap things up, maybe two minutes each. Um, you can comment on that in your closing comments. Well, well, the funniest thing about that, Ed, is this is a letter to the civil servants to tell them you have to keep your secrets of the office and you should not be speaking to the press. And lo and behold, the exact letter that is telling you that you should be secretive has been leaked. So it only demonstrates what it is. I agree with you that Millie's hideout might not be all that there is, but maybe there's gold or oil on the Millie's in the ground, the Millie's hideout. <laughs> These are things that have to be appreciated. The other part of what you say, though, is even more sinister. If you look at Kaichur News and Stabrook News on for about the last three weeks, every other day, there is the disposal of public lands, there is the disposal of public resources. 
There is uh, contracts for the lift of the petroleum. There are issues to do with uh, services and industry, the building of the whatever hospital for a billion dollars that's going on, the distribution of uh, monies to businesses. Um, so you can see how there is a concerted effort to spend. I believe say so a colleague here, he wrote a very interesting uh, little piece uh, about exactly how it was that we went from being so far in the positive to so far in the negative and why the dangers of that continuing is likely to be of real uh, detriment to us going forward. We might inherit a treasury that we would have to do a zero budget. I mean, literally, that's what's going to happen. But what I would like us to remember and what I would like us to appreciate and the supporters of APNU and the coalition should appreciate. I have a very good friend who um, I take good counsel from, even though he does not quite appreciate that he has, um, the, that I value his opinions as highly as I do. He is in a position where he is not, he wouldn't be allowed to speak for himself because of his job. But he said, the, the reality is this, they chose decency, they chose integrity, they chose honesty. These were their campaign slogans. But these things must mean something to real people. To the average man on the street, it must mean something. Intelligent people have struggled with it. But these people are using it essentially to goad and to incite the poor people of the country, the poor supporters who depend on them, and to take them and use those words to build intolerance and hate. Because they're trying to say, we're the ones that are honest and decent, and we have integrity, and these others do not. And we must fight them because of that. So they have taken this that, and made it into what it is. And to use these terms to take the poor people who are struggling, when they are the privileged ones, and they are the ones getting the benefit, you know, they lack respectfully to all of them. They lack the moral fiber to comment on those things. And they have now demonstrated across the board that they are unconcerned with the will of the people. They are unconcerned with decency or the rule of law. They are concerned about one thing, remaining in power for as long as they can so that they can plunder the resources of this country. They have no other agenda. They will lie. They will fool their supporters. And you have to understand. We all understand the political dynamic. You have loyal supporters, people who believe in their leaders. But you see, those people have a corresponding thing. They depend on their leaders to tell them the truth. That's part of leadership. You have to not mislead and deceive. And that's what their main game has been since the uh, election has taken place, 134 days of deceit. That's all it has been. Uh, your closing comments, please. Um, I think, Sanjeev, I thank you for that statement. That's actually very on spot, because the fact is this nation has not benefited from Granger's economic plan. As a clear example, since... There was none, he says. What economic plan? There was none. So, well, you got to give something to him. Eh? So, but since January to June 2020, six months, the estimate decline in the economy is 20%. And it says a lot about his competence and ability or the ability of his cabal to run anything. Yet these people have the audacity to try to hold on to power via illegal means. The fact that this nation is not at peace today because there's a lots and lots of Guyanese who are not at peace. And the anxiety within the people's hearts and minds is so high. And we see all these state-owned properties now, um, you know, attempts being made to burn them. It tells you a lot about the losing side and they're knowing that they lost and their selfish agenda of trying to reduce the asset base that will be available to the winners in, uh, from the incoming government. So you see, this is all a strategy. Um, and that is why we must be, we must never give up. 
um, because these political leaders, as we said, they're not, they're not loyal. But the fact remains, look at this carefully. We got to give total credit to the law-abiding Guyanese people who have not broken any law so far over the, since March 2nd, especially the COVID-19 regulations. People have been adhering to it. The, the lawbreakers are doing it. They're breaking the law. But the law-abiding citizens who are in the majority are not breaking the law. Um, yet they continue to stand up to the sanctimonious gangsters. And they're doing it in a patient, calculated, and structured manner. And they're winning um, the battle against these gangsters who, who are using state institutions to basically indicate to the voting public that, um, you know what, we can hold on for another day, as Sanjeev is saying. But let me make this very, very clear. The majority of Guyana has a deep sense of dissatisfaction in the integrity, in the honesty, and in the character of the sanctimonious gangsters, gangsters and their kind of leadership. So Eddie, I look forward to the rest of this week because this is a great week for Guyana because there is light at the end of this tunnel. And that bright occasion would be when uh, the Madam Chair declares the rightful and legal winner of the 2020 elections. The People's Progressive Party Civic and the President-elect of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, His Excellency, Dr. Irfan Ali. Thank you. All right, thanks, uh, gentlemen. And I, I just want to add to what you said, because when you look around this country and you, you see what is happening, um, clearly, Granger and his small cabal, they're trying to strangle the people of this country. It is time that this, this entire um, process come to an end so that the people of this country can move forward. People are not um, able to eat. People are not able to work. Um, you know, people are suffering in every single corner. And this is not just PDP supporters. All Guyanese are suffering um, as a result of the situation we're in. So Granger and his cabal needs to get their knees off the necks of Guyanese and let us move forward. You have lost the elections, as one former Caribbean prime minister said, take your licks like a man and move on. You lost. Don't be a bully. Gentlemen, thanks for joining me. Let me just say one point. In the Bible, it says, let my people go. Remember that. And biblical reasons will show Guyana will be free. Thanks, gentlemen, and thanks to our viewers. We're going to be back here at 1 p.m. Take care, sis. Take care, Ed. Take care to the viewers and our listeners. Enjoy your day, and may your God be with you. Thank you.